Set is partly due to the introduction of specialist nurses at hospitals across the UK who discuss the possibility of donation with bereaved families. The NHS plans to launch a new organ donation strategy in the summer. There were approximately 1,200 organ donations last year, compared with about 800 the year before. That led to more than 3,000 transplants, although three people still die every day waiting for a replacement organ. 125 families went against the wishes of their relatives and refused to allow an organ to be donated. With me now is Carl Wiley, a specialist NHS organ transplant nurse. And in our Salford studio is Natalie Kerr, who received a lung transplant uh, last year. Thank you both for joining us on the programme. Uh, Carol, if I can start with you, you are having to approach families at probably the worst possible time of their lives. How much training have you had and how difficult is it to approach them? I've had quite a lot of training. It, th this is my job, this is my role. Without training, I wouldn't be able to do it, you know. And we, we, get, we get taught how, how to talk to families, when is the right time to approach them, and what words to actually use to make it more comfortable for them. Uh, and how do you do it? Because I was reading some of the advice, I think, back in 2007, was to be sympathetic, but firm. I mean, that sounds a, that sounds a little aggressive, doesn't it? I think firm is a bit of an aggressive word to use. Um, we're, we're very sympathetic, and we're very sy sympathetic to that family's needs at the time. And we'll spend a lot of time with them, um, alleviating any fears they have, helping them with what, whatever it is they need. You know, I mean, some families are more preoccupied with what's going on outside the hospital, but they're not ready for the donation conversation. And, and if people say to you, no thanks, we just really can't face even thinking of this at the moment, do you immediately back off, or, or do you persevere? We don't immediately back off. We, we try and find out why. Um, you know, get it. Um, if it's just because they are scared uh, about the mutilation fears or something like that, we'll, we'll alleviate that and we'll explain the process to them. But if they still say no, then we'd stay and we'd support them throughout, right, right until the end of their loved one's life. Natalie, you received a lung transplant last, last year. How, how long had you been waiting? And, and did you, how much did you know about the whole donation process? Um, I was really lucky. I only waited for 17 weeks. Um, and when I went on the transplant list, I was told there, there was a possibility that I might never, never receive my transplant. So it's a lottery, really. I just had to wait and hope for the best. And, and what did they tell you about the donor, or, or do they not? Um, I was told she was a 52-year-old lady. And she'd never smoked. And, and, and how do you how, how do you feel about having that donation? And do you know anything about the dilemma? If indeed there was a dilemma that her family went through. Um, as far as I'm aware, they, they were really happy the family to donate her organs, as, as was herself. And she totally transformed my life, saved my life. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. Carol, um, the family can override, can't they? Uh, the original decision by the, the deceased person to, to donate their organs. Has that ever happened to you or to, to your colleagues? Or, and what, what do you do there? It's never personally happened to me, but it has happened to some of my colleagues. And normally the reason they override is they never knew that person's wishes. They didn't know that they were on the organ donor register. Or it would be maybe a conflict in the family, like one person wanted to donate, but the other person just couldn't agree to it at that time. And when that happened, how much time have you got to continue discussing with the family? Because if they're on a ventilator, I mean, how long can, can that be kept on? Uh, potential donors can stay on a ventilator for about 24, 48 hours. I mean, because the do donation process itself can take that long. So, and we can spend as much time as needed with that family, supporting them, being with them, and helping them come to the right decision that's right for them on the day. N Natalie, it's changed your life. I mean, you are, you're young and you're, and you're fit now. Would you support this campaign pushing even harder to make people consider donating their organs and, and actually the sort of the idea of you have opted in unless you deliberately opt out? Do you think that is that is the way forward? Definitely, I think that's the answer. There's so many people that are dying waiting for organs. And if they just if we had this opt out system, people then if they really didn't want to donate their organs, they could say the wishes and nobody needs to argue with anybody. But, but there are religious reasons, aren't there? Yeah, which is fair enough, and those people can opt out if they want to. 
Uh, but my life was definitely saved. I'm living proof that organ donation works. My children are very happy that they've got the money back. And my life has been saved. So please join the organ donor register because here I am telling, telling my story. Do, do you think that there should be some sort of reward perhaps for going on an organ donation scheme as well? I mean, some of the other ideas are that perhaps if you do that, you'll be entitled to a different sort of care or first come first. You, you, you'll have a, a faster route to care if you need it as well. I don't know, I don't think so. Um, I know that you're three times more likely to actually need a transplant yourself than you are to actually give an organ. So if you think of it in that respect, um, I don't know, if, you, if your family members were poorly, what would you do? Yeah, and, and your children, for example, have you said that you would be prepared for their bodies to be used? Uh, yeah, um, I discussed it with my little boy, he's 10, and he's more than happy for his organs to be donated should anything God forbid happen to him because he's seen what good has happened to his mummy. And Carol, when, when you're discussing this and perhaps you're dealing with children as well, how, how long have you got, if, if, if the child is being ventilated, do you do you give them examples about the, the good that has happened from this? But if somebody is so distraught and so grief stricken, it, it must be difficult to, to actually get through to them, isn't it? Um, no, it's not. I mean, like, Offering the option of donation is is just an amazing thing, and we, we do um, explain to families which organs could be donated and, and how they, who who they might go to, what kind of conditions people would have um, for particular organs, and that. And when families listen to it, and you know, and they they do know about people waiting for kidney transplants that are on dialysis, and they do understand that. And but there's lots of other organs that they don't didn't realise could be donated. And is part of the message perhaps that they should feel pride that their their son, their daughter, their brother, whoever, uh, has been able to create and, and secure longer life longevity for, for, for somebody else? They do get a lot of comfort from donation. I mean, donation is just a wonderful gift, and the families are so amazed that people like your, your um, other guest here looking at looking so well and raving and you know i mean looking at her they will know how wonderful it was what they did and, and that's just a fun fun thought from you i mean you are completely fit now but you didn't have to wait that long but you know of other people who did have to wait a long time and, and some who, who just didn't make it because no donate no donor came forward yeah unfortunately i've got friends that have sadly passed away uh, waiting for transplants and they've been you know no no more older than myself, which is such a shame, young girls. Um, so sad they didn't get the, the second chance at life like I have. All right, well, uh, Nastika and uh, Carol Wiley, thank you both very much indeed uh, for joining us in the programme. You're watching uh, BBC.